go to the podium, please, and state your name and your address. Marie Kale, 2183 South Van Dyke Bags. Well, I'm concerned about the use of pot because of what the marijuana has done to my own family and on the regulation of what's in it. My oldest son, when he was 15, went to a rock concert in Saginaw. He got a free joint because they throw him out there. His was laced with cocaine. Daddy had a heart attack. He died and came back. Then he had heart attacks for a month after because he didn't know what he was getting. And then I've also worked with corrections in Flint, with people who sell drugs. I worked in a state mental hospital for two years. I worked with mental health here. And I just know that it's so damaging. Also a friend of mine, uh, with the medical benefits, you really don't know what you're getting with some of those. Her friend in Saginaw uh, smoked a joint for back pain. So she went to the hospital and she was on life supports and now she has to live in a foster home. So that recently happened. And also with the rise in crime that you get when you study these other places, if you got that, look what you have. Look at Greenleaf Township down here in Sanilac County. Remember the guys that come up to rob the people who had the medicinal marijuana over there by Holbrook Road? Two people were killed with that incident over that. And I also help with a homeless shelter. So then we see another parade of people of what drugs do to them. And I think because of that incident, we could not get a homeless shelter up in this area. So we had to open ours down in, Sag or down in Sandusky because of that incident where they were the, I went to the Greenland Township meeting because they were afraid of what the kind of people were going to come in if we had a homeless shelter put there because of that incident where, like I said, the guys from Flint come up and they, those two people were killed there. So there's a lot to be considered. And when they talk about now, most of the towns around here, Caseville doesn't want it or they're tabling it to study, which I would recommend. Uh, I understand Cass City approved it because they think it's going to bring in uh, money. Well, I got a feeling that they may regret that. And many of the smaller towns are either waiting or tabling it. So I would just like you all to consider all the issues because there's a lot at stake here. I have grandkids here, especially up here in the school. And uh, it's so hard to control. So I just hope you all really consider everything. And I know you're concerned about our community. I have 18 grandchildren, and I want them to grow up and be safe. Thank you. Stephen Koppel. Uh, I was asked at the uh, last meeting by Koppel and Rockford to put together kind of a bullet point and present some things to you guys <clears throat> at the public hearing. A couple things I'd like to address is uh, th this law is called the Michigan Regulation and Taxation of Marijuana Act, or MRTMA. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is a new law, and this law was written by the marijuana industry, so make sure you keep that in mind. There's a lot of great areas. Uh, in this law as it's written. It wasn't written by uh, the legislature of, of the state. My opinion is the state dropped the ball on this. Uh, back in 2008, medical marijuana passed convincingly in the state, and our legislators, le legislatures should have uh, realized that this too was going to pass, and they should have uh, put together uh, a, a comprehensive law, a, a better written law, uh, rather than have it go to vote. But regardless, this is what we've got, and uh, again, uh, there's a ton of gray areas uh, in this law. The MRTMA, which is the Recreational Marijuana uh, Law that passes, is different from the uh, Medical Marijuana Facilities Act, which we've been dealing with. If you guys remember um, back recently, that was the one where uh, the medical marijuana dispensaries in town, if you didn't want to do anything about it, if you didn't want to town, then you didn't have to do anything about it. Well, in this one, if you don't want to know, you have to enact a, a, an ordinance. Uh, it's, it was MML's opinion that when the medical marijuana dispensary was on board, and they said in order to opt out, you don't have to do anything about it, that that's what the, exactly what the council did. The council didn't do anything about it. So now they're actually making us do something about it by passing uh, an ordinance in order to opt out of the uh, recreational 
marijuana, or what they're referring to as marijuana establishments. They're businesses that sell recreation marijuana, as opposed to a medical marijuana dispensary. So you've got a dispensary for medical marijuana, uh, establishment for recreation marijuana. <clears throat> Excuse me. These two differences are confusing, and there's a lot of gray area, and it leaves a lot open for uh, litigation uh, down the road. Now, the, the uh, MRTMA, which is the current one that just passed, it creates six or seven license types by the state. And what I mean by six or seven, I'll go through them. It creates a grower's license, it creates a processor's license, a secure transporter's license, a safety compliance facility license, a retail license, which is what we're dealing with today, and a micro business uh, license where you can have a business that grows up to 150 plants, which is a small uh, grow operation. And any other type of marijuana related business licensed by the state. So that's the possible seventh one there. Now the state has a year to assemble a department to regulate the sales and the establish and the uh, the implementation of the establishments. So what they're asking you to do is is by not passing an ordinance and by allowing a uh, by allowing a establishment in town, they're asking you to allow a business in town that you have no idea how it's going to be regulated because the department's going to regulate it hasn't even been formed yet, and they've got up to a year uh, to do that. Uh, at, at the MML uh, training that Detective Sergeant Koblock and I went to, they said this is one of the issues where they're asking you to put blind faith in the state. Um, you know, go ahead and allow it, and then a year from now we're going to tell you what the regulations are for this business. The state has, and I said, they haven't created this department yet, and uh, they have one year to assemble this. Back when the medical marijuana uh, dispensaries were around, the state had a year to assemble that, and it took over a year for them to figure out what they were doing, and, and it was doing. I'm not sure if they've learned uh, from that at all or not. The, the amounts allowed under the... Uh, MRTMA are the most generous amounts in the country. You can have two and a half ounces on your possession, you can have an extra 10 ounces at home locked up, and you can grow uh, up to 12 plants. And if you have a medical marijuana card, now you get an additional two and a half ounces under your medical marijuana card, and you get an additional 12 plants. So um, the, the amounts are extremely generous, but again, keep in mind that this law is written by the uh, marijuana industry. <coughs> what um, MML talks about is uh, give this law time to let it play out in court. It's been 10 years, uh, 2008 when the medical marijuana law passed, and there's still some things in litigation with the courts over what that law means. So this is a new law, uh, it's great, give it some time, let it work on the courts, find out exactly uh, where the courts are gonna stand, and find out exactly what this state department, when it's assembled, what they're gonna require and what they're gonna regulate. Now part of this law says, a municipality may charge up to $5,000 to defray administrative costs, which are attorney costs and selection process, and law enforcement costs associated with the operation of the marijuana establishment. So by them allowing the municipalities to charge $5,000 to defray costs, they're admitting that there are gonna be costs to this. The costs are unknown. When Kevin and I were at, the tech sergeant Kolak and I were at training uh, in Ann Arbor, the Ann Arbor city attorney was up there, and he said they have five establishments, or at that time medical marijuana dispensaries in their town. They collect $5,000 from each of them, $25,000, and it doesn't touch the cost of the city for these to operate. They have to hire an attorney to fill out the application process. Now, if you allow five in your, in your municipality, and seven of them apply for it. You've got to have a selection process, a neutral selection process, to pick five of them, and then two are going to go without. And under every circumstance, those two are going to have a right to sue you over your selection process. So these are some costs that went into it, and basically the attorneys ate up all that money, ate up all that cost. And then the law enforcement, um, you got the fact that uh, these establishments are target-rich environment because they're cash heavy. They can't put the cash into a banking system because it's federally regulated, it's still federally legal. And that's one thing that we need to keep in mind now talk about is it, it's still federally legal. Now when President Obama was in office, he <coughs> said that the federal government isn't going to enforce marijuana. So the states started passing their state law. And one of the one of the things brought up by ML is at some point in time, this current president or future president is either going to say we're going to enforce this or we're going to legalize it. 
So if he says we're going to, the federal government is still legal, we're going to start to enforce it. Now you've got all these municipalities uh, that have marijuana establishments and all these other laws that are going to be challenged and they're going to be enforced. Now, keep in mind, um, when that, if that comes about or when that comes about, there's going to be a big challenge that's going to go to the Supreme Court on whether the state has the right to enact a law by vote that overrules federal law. And that's going to be one of the big challenges at the uh, at the uh, Supreme Court level. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, one other thing to consider with it being uh, federally illegal that MML brought up is your uh, potential to receive federal aid and federal grants down the road. If you're allowing a uh, an establishment in town that is violating federal law, uh, if you'll be eligible to receive any federal aid uh, in the form of grants. There are problems associated with establishment. Uh, as Ms. Keel stated, down in San Lake County, there was a marijuana grow operation and a gang conflict came to rob it. And two people ended up shot, one committed suicide in jail, and the other went to uh, prison. Lexington, uh, in November, uh, Lexington has a medical marijuana dispensary that was robbed. Attempted robbery, um, they were able to uh, apprehend uh, the robbers at a, a time uh, shortly thereafter. So, crime associated with, with marijuana, now that marijuana is a legal substance, if you remember back when bath salts were a legal substance, when bath salts were available, Maple Lanes was broken several times, Calvin's Market was broken several times, so even though they were outside the city, it still affected us. We still had to assist with the operations because that stuff was brought into the city. We did search warrants in the city. If you remember the deal that took us down to Beach Street, uh, ended up with a hazmat team in, ended up with a search warrant, ended up sending a guy to prison. And uh, when that all started, that was legal. That was legal stuff. But the price went up so high, people couldn't afford it, they were breaking and stealing. So there are crimes uh, associated with this. And I'm not saying all this is definitely going to happen. I, I'm just telling you the possibilities of what could happen. MML, um, in their training, they had, a, they had a PowerPoint and some problems to think about. When the medical marijuana dispensaries were put in, you could charge a 3% uh, tax. And under this new law, now that 3% is repealed, so you, you can no longer um, draw that 3%. So, Somewhere down the line, there's possibly that through litigation, the tax or the $5,000 that you collect on this may be repealed also. You can combine the amounts under the MMA, the medical marijuana, and the uh, MRTA, recreational <coughs> marijuana, so you can double your amounts of marijuana. Um, the process uh, of extracting the resin from this uh, is fl makes flammable material, so you have a, a, a hazard there with an uh, explosive hazard. Uh, you've got issues associated with the water, the powder, the power, the waste disposal, the safety, the accessibility, what they're going to do with their wastewater um, when they're done with this stuff. There's a firearms issue because the federal law says you can't possess uh, narcotics and uh, possess a firearm, and a lot of these people try to keep firearms for security uh, when, when they rob people, break in. That's the ATF law because, again, it's federally illegal. Um, with uh, Employers uh, can still refuse to allow their employees to, to smoke dope uh, at their places. And um, the other thing, uh, they talk about the village uh, determining who gets licensed. And I talked about that, that you got to set up a, a selection process and who gets licensed and is it competitively, is there a competitive uh, process to this? So they had a conclusion of that. And, and I read this, as challenging as it is for municipality uh, to come to grips with medical marijuana regulation of the MMFLA, which is medical marijuana, the differences posed by the proposed MRTMA regarding recreational marijuana are likely to be significant greater. Under the MMFLA, many municipalities took a wait to see position uh, on the issue of broad commercialization of medical marijuana, which only required that the government body of municipality do nothing, and that's why I spoke about uh, earlier. And for those municipalities that chose to opt in on the medical marijuana, it granted them a great deal of regulatory discretion, and some uh, representatives of the marijuana industry have called erroneous uh, as an overreach. So as recently safeguard the public safety, health, and the welfare uh, of the public. The MRTMA, on the other hand, requires municipalities to affirmatively take legislative actions and opt out of regulating recreational marijuana commercial enterprises. 
For those municipalities that choose to permit recreational marijuana establishments to exist in the community, the regulatory framework is much more circumscribed than under the MMFLA and certainly more likely to raise legal issues. The one thing that if you guys decide not to uh, pass this ordinance and allow uh, medical or allow marijuana establishments in the city um, or uh, or you know try to regulate yourself there can be uh, and, and um, ML brought this up that if this ordinance here fails the citizens may petition the state to initiate an ordinance their own orders to provide a number of marijuana establishments and at that point in time you will have no control over it so uh, MML is recommending, uh, should say the recommending, uh, MML's, uh, uh, my, my opinion, I'll face it this way, okay, my opinion uh, to council is to pass this ordinance now, and you can always readdress it in the future. If there comes a time where uh, the law is all worked out, the gray areas are washed out, it's beneficial to the community to, to have a marijuana establishment in the city, you can rescind this ordinance and then you can pass one, whether it's a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, in the future, whatever it is. You guys have the option to rescind that and make a statement. If you don't pass this ordinance right now, you don't have control over that and you don't have that option. So it's my recommendation that you pass the ordinance, redress in the future. Um, do you have any other questions? I'd be happy to answer them. Are you saying you can or will you lose federal? You can. But you don't. That's not for sure. Oh, no. That's not for sure. Yes. And like I think says, nothing's really been determined. And like I said, all these things, I'm telling you what's possible. You know, what's, the, what's the possibilities? Um, and like I said, myself, the detective started to pull back. I've been to uh, two training sessions. And um, I'm telling you the possibilities of, of what could happen. And nothing, this, this is, uh, there's a ton of gray areas. Uh, the Prosecutor Association of Michigan is, is frankly going through this trying to what it's going to take to make decisions is somebody's going to have to make an arrest. And it's going to have to go to court, it's going to have to be challenged. And it's going to have to work its way through the court system, it's going to have to work its way up. Because the state law is be decided at the state level. And this all takes time. So you're going to need, uh, you're going to need a police department or police officer willing to, to, all right, I'm going to make this arrest because i got to see, we got, we got to figure out if this is going to be challenged or not, how it's going to work out. Because it's a gray area. You need a prosecutor that's willing to take the court and then take up through the ranks. And, and that's what takes time. And you're also saying if somebody comes into town, there is no regulations right now, per se, for the state. There, there are no state regulations because that department for regulating hasn't even been established yet. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. That was a great presentation. <laughs> Anyone else this evening? to approve the amendment of section 8-48, the possession and the use of certain controlled substances and its derivatives. Did 
Chief had talked about that previously too. Mm -hmm. This is to, um, to change the uh, listing of substances in our existing ordinance to comply with what the state has now made legal or illegal. Any motion cost is last year to my knowledge correct right. um, so I'll entertain a motion to approve that I have one question um, just for my sake because it's supposed to be for the year and yet we're approving something that starts July 1st of 18 so the year the fiscal year for that is is July to June I just wondered why yes taking care of the report there's a report due the end of March that covers what we did for the previous 12 calendar year and then it's the support for the rest of the way through this year okay thank you Differences besides price. I mean, is there was there a big difference in the quality or doors you know? is, has a bigger R value and it, it's just a better door all the all the way around. It has a thermal break to the panels also. For the last one here, only mm -hmm. has a ten point six seven, I think. So it is a better door. Okay, so we're paying more, but we're getting plus a couple of folks didn't tell you if you're getting weather strip or. Two sets of bills, total of 121, 472, 64. Entertain a motion. 
should, should pay the bills. Seconded by Dick. Thank you. Uh, Council Member DeBoer? Yes. Correct. Perez? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Mayor Pritica? Yes. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. And any committee reports tonight? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. And we'll start with council comments. Dick? Okay, I was just uh, going to ask a question. I don't know because I wasn't here when we did the uh, so you know solicitations on this on this main street. So, you know, for the questions for. Oh. And I was just wondering if we, we're going to have a bottle back there from about three thirty until. 4:15. If we couldn't say they could do that, but they had to stop during that real business time. If you don't do that, you're gonna have cars lined up all the way down here. You know, just say there's half hour or 45 minutes or something like that that they did not do it because of the traffic condition. But you can do it if you want. But I just wanted to suggest it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? No. Oh. Steve. Uh, I'd just like to thank the chief because I was on the uh, fence about this whole thing. So this is one I appreciate him clearing up some things for me. Very much so. Tammy? Just the same thing, just the amount of work and time that he's taking to do that. So it was just it was very well done. Clark? Nothing that hasn't been said already, so 